Hello and welcome. I hope that you are having a fantastic day today. We're going to talk about the mystery of the Bitcoin double spend. Now this week, somebody reported to the news and the news media went crazy with it that there was a double spend issue on the Bitcoin network. Well, it was false. So we're going to dig into this story, what happened and what really went on behind the scenes. Let's take a look. Now, our YouTube channel, we've, we've actually built a brand new website and this new website is at luminatecrypto.com. I hope that you'll take a look at it. And our web channel is about ideas to help you take profits and avoid losses. And so if you're interested in avoiding losses and taking profits with cryptocurrency, you're in the right place. Let's get into it. Now, I am not a financial advisor, and this is not financial advice. This is my opinion. Cryptocurrency involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for every investor. In fact, past results are no indication of future performance. In no event should the content of this video uh, be construed as an express or implied promise or guarantee. Now, this paragraph is great advice for any investment. It's been written specifically for cryptocurrency. But either way, I highly recommend that you read it because this paragraph is there to help you avoid losses. And that's exactly what we all want to do is we want to avoid losses. Now, if you took, and I'm going to take kind of a, 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 a I'm going to go down to a different trail. So this little, this little matrix uh, is not really part of today's video, but I wanted to throw it in there because it keeps us grounded in a good way when we see things that make you go, oh my gosh, should I, sh should I sell my cryptocurrencies? Should I sell my Bitcoin? This is good information to help you stay grounded in those moments. Now, if you took $1,000 and bought Bitcoin and then three years later sold it, and these dates cover the entire history of Bitcoin, all the way starting with January 1 of 2011, all the way up to December, January 1 of 2018 and ending December 31st, 2020, so just a few weeks ago. Now, the, the, the key thing that you want to look at is this, the numbers in this column. So for each of those three years, if you spent $1,000, bought Bitcoin, and sold it three years later, how much money would you get from that sale? Now, the last three years would have netted you $1,960. I know compared to some of these other numbers in this column, uh, they're not nearly as big or dramatic, but stop and think about that $1,960. Isn't that almost doubling your money? Where can you invest $1,000 and three years later get almost $2,000 back? I honestly don't know of very many places, but if you can think of some, I would love to hear about it because I would be interested in exploring those as an investment opportunity as well. So go ahead and take a look at the rest of those numbers. You can pause this video and dig into it. We're going to go on and talk about double spending. Now, when it comes to cryptocurrency and Bitcoin in particular, um, and most cryptocurrencies, it's, it's one of the key things that the developers have all worked really, really hard at is to make sure that it's not possible to double spend your cryptocurrency. So if I have $1,000 in Bitcoin, I shouldn't be able to spend my $1,000 and send it to Jane and then take the same $1,000 and spend it to Sam because that would be wrong. It would, it would, it would make the network um, corruptible. It would make the network unstable, unsuitable for investment purposes. If, if it was easy to somehow uh, forge the network to allow me to spend that thousand dollars more than once, maybe over and over and over and over again, 
then all of a sudden the network or that cryptocurrency isn't worth, isn't worth anything. It's not worth using. And Bitcoin has a lot of things built into it to prevent that from happening. And that's what we're going to look at today. So on Thursday, just a few days ago, January 21st, 2021, Bitcoin fell by 15%. And that was partially triggered by a double spend rumor. So the news reported that something had happened on the Bitcoin network that had allowed double spending. So the real question, the important question is, was the rumor true? And the answer, the, the short answer is no, the rumor was false. So what is a double spend error? Well, I kind of already answered it talking about how you could spend the same cryptocurrency more than once. But let's let's dig a little bit deeper. So in this example, we have chain one and we have chain two. All right. So how Bitcoin works is you have what's called miners. And all a miner is is somebody who set up either a program or bought a hardware device and those machines, either the computer program or the hardware device, are designed to protect the Bitcoin network. And so you get a, a block of information, and in that block of information is a bunch of transactions. And those transactions represent individual pieces, people's transactions. But it's not just one person, it's many people until it hits the maximum limit of size. Now, if there's not that many transactions waiting on the network, then it'll just process whatever transactions are available. And the miner goes through a process of validating that that cryptocurrency is truly not already spent. And then it goes through a mathematical puzzle and it tries to solve that puzzle. Now, many miners are working on the same thing and more than one may actually find the solution to the puzzle at the same time. Now, most of the time that doesn't happen, but every once in a while it will happen. And in this case, we had two different chains that solved the same puzzle at the same time. And so the result was the same transaction was in both of these. Now, there were a few other things that happened in this particular occurrence that was back here on February 21st. One of them was that the person's transaction, they initially started it with a very, 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 very low fee. And with Bitcoin in particular, the fee determines how quickly your transaction is processed. So those who have paid the highest fees get processed first, and those who paid low fees get processed later. Well, this person put in a low fee, he got set on chain one up here, and then he decided to increase the amount of his fee so that he could get processed quicker. And that transaction got added to chain two. Now, chain one and chain two happened very, very close together. They were almost at the same time. And what Bitcoin does when it has a conflict like this, because it considered this a conflict because the same transaction was in both, even though the fee had been changed, uh, technically, the way it looks to the network is it's still the same transaction with just different fees. So the network went in and double checked everything and it, it, it's designed, the Bitcoin network in particular is designed to pick the chain that has the most confirmations on it. Well, chain one had the most confirmations. That was the chain that had the lower fee. Chain two let me grab this correctly. Chain two down here did not have enough confirmations. And so chain two ended up becoming deprecated or basically not used. And so chain two is still in the data on the network, but it's no longer considered a valid chain. And chain one is considered the valid chain. Thus, there was no actual double spending um, because the, the chain with the second spend doesn't exist. It's not considered a valid chain on the Bitcoin network. And so the end result is that that cryptocurrency was spent only one time. So that's kind of the deep dive or the simple deep dive into what actually happened. If we were going to do a real deep dive, we might go out and actually look at the uh, network and try and look up those chains and 
and the blocks and yada yada and so so on and so forth. Now we have an algorithm that is having fantastic performance. In November, it saw a 49% gain. In January, it's seeing a very, very significant gain. Uh, January's not done yet, and so we're not sure where it'll end up, but it'll probably end up looking like 20, 30% uh, gain on our cryptocurrency trading. And so I would like to recommend that you check out um, our eToro uh, copy trader page because you can check the stats for our uh, trading program. Now the trading program uses mind-numbing math to make recommendations when to buy and when to sell cryptocurrencies and we're using that trading pr program on eToro as a tool to help us make uh, buying and selling decisions. So if you don't have an eToro account there is a limited $50 bonus that eToro is offering our traders. And how you get the $50 limited bonus is you're going to go to this link here. You'll set up an eToro. You have to be a brand new eToro user. You'll set up an eToro account and deposit $200 into your eToro account. And then use that. You have to have $200 or more in order to copy trade us. But then go to this uh eToro people luminate algo trader where we have our profile set up and once you go to our profile page you can click the copy trader button and you'll be able to copy our trading programs trades and what happens is is you get to decide how much of your portfolio you're going to copy trade us with and every time we make a trade based off of the computer's recommendations that trade is automatically duplicated in your account so do you have any questions how can we be of service to you leave comments in the youtube channel in the comment section on the youtube channel in the meantime i hope that you'll like subscribe and hodl and hey do me a favor and have a fantastic day